What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video here today. Today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about using hotkeys on Thinkorswim. This is a question and a video that has been requested of me for the longest time that I've just now gotten around to doing. So, here you guys go. Today, we're talking about hotkeys and the hotkey setup on Thinkorswim. First question I get is, do I use hotkeys? The answer is no. Question being, why don't I use hotkeys on Thinkorswim? Answer being is they just don't make sense for me to use. Their options aren't big enough. So to me, there's no real benefit to using the hotkeys over manually doing it yourself. Why do people use hotkeys? Answer, hotkeys make it easy for people to get in and out of positions quickly. They don't have to worry about using their mouse to manually enter the amount of shares they want to buy or manually enter the amount of shares they want to sell. Hotkeys allow them to pre-program custom orders that would say, hey, I would like to buy 5,000 shares, limit. I would like to put in the limit order for 5,000 shares. They get, or you know, it goes through, and then they can do a custom command that says, I wanna sell three quarters of my position. I wanna sell half of my position. So when you have custom orders, it can benefit very active day traders. In a sense, they can custom create different orders that they would like to push through that they can just do it at the click of a button. Okay. So why not use hotkeys on thinkorswim? As stated, the hotkey availability isn't quite big enough to the point where I see a big benefit to using them. So some of you out there, it might still help you guys to use them. So if I were to use hotkeys on Thinkorswim, why would I use hotkeys on Thinkorswim? What type of trader would I have to be to use uh, hotkeys on Thinkorswim? So in my eyes, the only way I could see that the hotkeys helping anybody for Thinkorswim is one, if you're someone who is crazy about efficiency and you want to minimize the amount of time it takes you to handle tasks, on Thinkorswim, then you might be someone who likes to use hotkeys to uh, navigate Thinkorswim. I'll show you that to actually kind of jump through different screens and areas of charts using the hotkeys. So navigating the platform a little bit quicker. And then secondly would be order execution. And the only way I could see the hotkeys helping anybody for order execution is if you're someone who has a very simplistic approach to trading, it is not complicated, what I mean by that is you are someone who literally just buys shares and sells shares. You don't need to have a custom amount of shares you want to purchase. You don't need a custom amount of shares you will try to sell after the stock goes up X, and then you don't have another custom order where it sells this much when it goes up this much. So if you're not someone who needs custom orders and you will be someone taking an approach of say buying a thousand shares, the stock goes up X amount and I sell those thousand shares and yeah, this could work for you. But again, I'm gonna show you, I don't really think there's a big benefit to using the hotkeys on Thinkorswim, but let's get into it. So first thing you do to setting up hotkeys on Thinkorswim is you're gonna go to this set up tab up here in the right hand corner. So from you know basically the charting screen, home screen, you'll go right up to the setup tab with the gear icon, click that, click these. All right, now that you're in hotkeys, you have a few things that we will talk about. First here in the hotkeys section, you'll have this general tab. General is the hotkey tab where you can flip through different channels. You could go to the monitor tab, trade tab, analyze scan, market watch charts tool, et cetera. So this little section are all the commands that you would use to navigate through your platform, as we stated earlier. All right. Next one down on the list is your more important tab that I would see more people using is the active trader tab. Active trader tab is where you're gonna actually execute orders from, which means everything down here is supposed to be there to help you execute and make trades faster and more efficiently, which it does to a certain extent, okay? Next one on the list going down is a couple more watch list charts and think script again most of you probably won't really use anything other than this active trader tab so we'll focus mainly on this tab so what is included in the active trader tab you have the options first these are all the different options or things you could pick from that would help you execute an order 
on the right hand side in this category we have the commands these are the actual commands you would input on your keyboard to make any of these things happen okay so what do they all mean is really the bigger question that you guys will have so first one all right i'm going to walk you we're not going to talk about zoom in zoom out reset zoom okay flatten position flatten position means you're going to exit your position and close it out fully at market reverse position means you were long a stock you will when you hit your hotkey command, if you have a hotkey command for reverse position, if you're long a stock and you hit reverse position, you would sell your position that's long and you'd automatically enter a position short. I'm not entirely sure what the flat now and reverse now is because I don't really see how they're different from the flattened position or reverse position. I guess that's something I could figure out, but I've never used the reverse now or flattened now. It's always flattened position or reverse position that I've used. Um, so I'm not sure what the difference is, but I'm assuming there's got to be some type of difference if there's they have them as an option, right? It would only make sense. All right. Your buy market is obviously pretty straightforward. That was a hot key. That would be a hot key command to buy at whatever the market price is or whatever the market maker is offering within the bid spread, bid and ask spread. Uh, buy at the ask. This is where if you put in a hot key command. It's not like a market order where you're buying market, you're gonna be going straight to the seller. So when you do buy at ask, you're gonna go straight to whatever the sellers are offering and buying. This is like buying a car. If you were going to buy a car from someone and you show up and just give them or purchase the car at whatever they're asking, you literally just bought at ask. You went to purchase a car and you bought it from the seller at their asking price, okay? Buying the bid. Buying the bid is a little bit different, shall we say, okay? Buying the bid is kind of like becoming a bidder at an auction, sort of, okay? If you're in an auction room and a bunch of people start bidding to purchase something and you want to join those people bidding to purchase, you would be buying at the bid. You would join all the other people that are bidding at that, that stock and you'd be joining the bidder. So that is you trying to kind of get the best price you can because you're just trying to get in. You're trying to buy the shares. You don't want to buy top dollar. So you don't want to buy from the ask and you're not trying to go in at a market order. You're trying to buy where all the buyers are at, where all the bidders are at. So that's you trying to really get the best price possible you can with all the other people bidding. Sell markets, pretty straightforward. Selling market, you would just sell your position at market. Selling the ask, okay? Selling the ask is you being the seller of a car trying to get top dollar. So you put a car up for sell or for sale, right? And you're now trying to sell it at top dollar. So selling the ask in terms of stock trading is you owning shares of a company and now you're trying to sell and you're going to sell where everybody else is trying to sell. You're joining the sellers. And then selling the bid is as it sounds. You are the person selling the car and now rather than you trying to get top dollar and selling where everybody else is selling, right? You're just going to undercut your price and you're just going to go directly to the buyers, right? So you're trying to sell a car and everybody, you know, you know, you're trying to sell a car, right? keep it simple. You're trying to sell a car and a buyer shows up to buy your car and he, you're trying to sell the car for 5,000. He offers you 4,000. He's bidding 4,000. The bidders are at 4,000. So for you to sell at the bid, that means you would just go and give your car to the bidder at 4,000. In terms of stock trading, you would just say, I'm just willing to get rid of my shares at whatever the buyers are offering. That would be selling at the bid. Okay. Auto send, we won't talk about. Cancel all, cancel all orders you have going out. Cancel buy, cancel any buying orders you have going out. And cancel sell, cancel any sell orders you have going out. Pretty straightforward. We've covered everything you need to know really about there. So that is all your hot key commands. Know that you can, okay, here's another thing. You cannot change any of these. In the red box, you cannot change any of that. In the yellow box, you can change these and you can customize these. These are the commands. This is what you choose to hit on your keyboard to customize 
or sorry, that's the, that's where you choose to hit your keyboard to make any of those purchases or sells happen. Okay. So in the yellow box, you can customize these in the red box. You cannot customize these at all. These are the options available through thinkorswim. As you can see, they're pretty limited. So that is why I do not use hotkeys on thinkorswim and as why many others probably don't use them as well. There's just not quite enough commands or customizable, you know, options that we really need to make it so much more efficient for our trading that it makes sense for us to use them. So you can customize these. How would you go about doing that? Well, what you need to do, let's say you wanted to use the command sell at bid. You would click sell at bid. You would come over to here. You would click custom. Once you're under custom, you can then choose what do you want it to be? Do you want it to be a shift key that you hit? Do you want it to be the alt key that you hit? Do you want it to be the control key you hit? We'll keep it as control and we will keep, we'll, we will label this one as control. I don't know. Let's do control Q. Okay. Control Q. Apply those settings. Ready? So when we go into our active trader tab, watch what happens when I hit control Q. Control Q. You can see an order just went out to sell 100 shares. Why 100? Because I have 100 in the quantity box, okay? Let's do control, I think control C was one. Control C, sell another 100 shares at, at limit, right? Let's do, I think it was Alt M. Alt M was another one here. Hold on, let me cancel this here. Or get that out of there. Okay, let's do Alt M. See, Alt M is a hot key to buy 100 shares at market price. You can see that obviously none of these orders are going through because it's Saturday and the market's closed. But as you can see, all these hot keys are giving me commands to buy 100 shares. That is because there's 100 shares there. If I change this to 500, okay, and I hit Alt M again, I will try and buy, oops, excuse me. I don't even have enough money in my account to buy 500 shares if I wanted to, is that what that looked like? So if I wanted to buy 300, let's do 200. Hell, maybe I'll have enough for that. Okay, Alt M, Alt M, there you go, 200 shares, it went through. So whatever amount of shares you have in your quantity box is what your hotkeys will be commanded to do. So if your command is buy market, whatever quantity you have in here, that hotkey will try and buy that many shares. So now you can see why this isn't, for me, really a benefit to using that, those hotkeys, right? So if I'm gonna use a hotkey, right? Let's do Alt-M to buy 200 shares, right? Sure, that works, right? But what happens if I got, so let's say I bought these 100 shares and then the stock went up however much money and I wanted to mark it out. I wanted to sell, right? I wanted to sell 100 shares, right? I would still have to go into this tab, click 100, enter, and then I could hit my hotkey to sell those 100 shares, which I think was control C. Like, let's cancel this one and do, right? So let's say I, let's say I got those. Let's say I bought those 200 shares, and then I think control C was the hotkey to sell. So then I want to sell 100, right? So let me ask you. Let's redo this. Let's, let's say I buy 200 shares. I go, uh use the hotkey alt m and let's say the order goes through and i buy 200 shares okay and then let's say now i own my 200 shares and then i want to sell 100 shares okay so let's say i own the 200 now i want to sell 100 shares so i could use the hotkey which was i think it was control c but see now it's putting sell 200 why because in the quantity box, the last thing that was in there was 200. So in order for me to make this hotkey, ready? Control C, or wait, hold on, that didn't, that didn't work. Oh, it's because I put a zero in there, right? So let's go back to, let's go back to 200, right? You know, if I wanted to sell 100 shares now, I would have to manually come in here, hit 100, and then I would have to hit my command of control C and then it would, oh, sorry, I didn't hit, I didn't hit enter there. So I put in a hundred, hit enter, now control C. Now you can see it's showing 100 shares for sale. So let me ask you, is there really a benefit to using those hotkeys? No, there's really not. Because if, let's say again, I go in 200 and I hit Alt M, 
I get the 200 shares at market, and now I want to sell 100 shares. If I already have to go into the quantity box, hit 100, there's no point of me hitting the hot key when I can just come up here and use one of the quick buttons. I'm already having to use my mouse to manually enter my shares. What's one more step of just going up here and hitting the button? I might as well do that rather than use the hot key. For example, let's go to something that's cheap. Right, let's go to something like, I don't know, a penny stock, um, TRXC. This is, yeah, so let's go to this penny stock, it's three bucks, right? Let's say I wanted to buy 15,000 shares, okay? Alt M, okay? So I'm trying to buy 15,000 shares at market. Let's say this order goes through and then I wanted to get out of my position by 5,000 shares each time. So I'm gonna do one purchase of 15,000 shares. Okay, and then I wanted to use a hot key to sell 5,000 shares. And then the stock goes up more, I sell 5,000 more shares. And then it goes up more and I sell 5,000 more shares, right? That would mean I would need to first use my hot key, get in 5,000 shares. And then my next hot key would have to be sell 5,000, sell 5,000, sell 5,000, right? So the process would look like, okay, Connor has hit the Alt M hotkey, which is now saying buy 15,000 shares because I have 15,000 shares in that order entry window. So let's say I get 15,000 shares. It would then go to, right? And, and again, remember, I wanted to get out by 5,000 shares. So that means once I get in 15,000, I would actually have to go to the quantity box, hit 5,000 shares, once I get the 5,000 shares in there, I could then start hitting control C or something. Hold on. I don't, I don't know why it got all goofed up there. Oh, 5,000. Oh, this, there we go. So once I got filled the, the 15,000, I would have to hit control C. But I already had to go to the quantity box to enter the 5,000. So there's no benefit. If, if I wanted, the, the way hotkeys work and it's beneficial is if I could, you know, go in here right? I could hit Alt M. I get in my 15,000 shares and then I can automatically just hit Control C. And that Control C is commanded to sell 5,000. So I don't have to go back. So once I get my 15,000, I can just go Control C, Control C, right? And it will just start selling. But I have to go up here and actually manually enter the amount of shares I want that hot key to command, which then means I'm already manually doing the work. So what's the point of using a hot key if you still have to manually do the work? Hot keys are there to take out, of, take out any of the manual steps of using a mouse. So if you have to use the mouse while using your hot keys, hot keys are basically pointless. Hot keys are only beneficial if you're only using hot keys. So if I could buy 15,000 shares and then quickly hit a button that sells 10,000 and sell a button that sells 5,000, then the hot keywords would make sense. But since I have to, you know, use the hot key, I get in and then I have to manually change my shares, the hot keys are basically pointless and that's why I don't use them. Okay. And then, so that's, that's basically that on the active trader window. You can customize any of those commands to do whatever you choose them to do, right? That's available, that's allowed. And then there was the other one, the general tab. If we hit control, you see all these numbers that pop up on the top of my, uh, uh, the screen here, you can see it says one, two, three, four. So by hitting control, right, the system has hotkeys commanded to the control button, and then it's control one takes me to the monitor tab, two, three, four, five, six, right, seven, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, right? They can go all the way back and forth. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Those are the hotkey commands on Thinkorswim. That's how you go about using them, how you go about setting them up. So for me, I don't use the hotkeys. I don't see them as being beneficial. The only way I see the hotkeys being beneficial for the active trader window for someone using Thinkorswim is if you're someone who buys shares and then sell the shares without manipulate or without changing the order. So if you're someone who buys a thousand shares and then once it goes up, you sell the thousand shares, then it would work perfect because you could just, you know, make a hot key to buy a thousand shares and then sell the thousand shares, buy the thousand shares, sell the thousand shares. But if you're someone who buys a thousand shares, then sells 500, then sells a couple hundred and sizes out, the hot keys are going to be pointless for you. So I hope that video helps you guys determine whether or not you're going to use hotkeys. And as always, thanks again for tuning in. If you can, give me a thumbs up, share the video, and subscribe to the channel as it helps me grow and it helps everything we do here. And I really appreciate it. So as always, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.